With their highest pick since 1982, the Lakers drafted Julius Randle out of Kentucky with the seventh overall pick. Carrie Chow joined by ESPN NBA insider Amin Al Hassan. What do you think of the Randle pick? It's all right. <laughs> Here's the thing: the, the the Lakers had their worst season in a long time, if not ever, and they got their highest pick since, as you said, since uh, since James Worthy. Mm -hmm. They walked away from all of this with Julius Randle, who's a good player, but a low ceiling player. How good can he be? He could be an okay power forward. I like that he's high motor. I like he's a good rebounder, but he's undersized and he really can't shoot the ball well. If I was the Lakers, I would have thought about trading that pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, we heard some rumors that Young, perhaps, from, from Philadelphia. I would have pursued one of those because at least you get someone who you know can contribute right now as long as we're not shooting for the stars as far as talent goes. How concerned are you over his right foot, which you broke during high school and may or may not have healed properly? I mean, it's concerning because the Lakers ostensibly want to be good right away. They want to make the playoffs next year. Kobe Bryant wants to make the playoffs. So if this kid has a bad foot that hasn't healed properly, that means surgery's probably in, on the horizon. That means he might miss time. That means he can't contribute right away. So that goes back to my, my thing to begin with. If you wanted to win right away, you should have traded the pick. If not, you should have gone for someone who has a chance to be great. All right, how do you expect the Lakers to what, – what kind of moves do you expect the Lakers to make in this offseason? One of the rumors that were out there were that the Lakers would go after – go for broke, going after LeBron, Carmelo, and Coach K. Anything – any chance of that happening? And what do you see the Lakers doing? Well, the first thing I ask is, was Teen Wolf not available? <laughs> why, why are they stopping there? Right. Look, if you're the Lakers, you're always going to be attached to these big names. It's Hollywood. They want that. They want the marquee name. The reality is I don't think they have a chance at any of those guys. All those guys have better options on the table to go to teams that are ready to win now as opposed to this pie-in-the-sky dream that the Lakers are trying to sell. So what do they have to do to get better? Because as you mentioned, they, only, they have a lot of roster spots they need to fill. If I'm the Lakers, I use my cap space to go after restricted free agents, guys like Eric Bledsoe, maybe Gordon Hayward, and tr uh, maybe a Chandler Parsons is another name who, who's going to be on the free agent market. You. It's not going to win you a championship next year, but it's going to make you a markedly improved team, and these are guys that can grow with the team beyond Kobe Bryant's uh, contract. Draft grade, Lakers. C plus, B minus, B minus. Okay, let's hate on some Julius Randle. Hate right hard. All right. He's ESPN NBA insider Amin El Haas, and I'm Kerry Chow. For your latest on Lakers, be sure to check out ESPN.com's NBA page. Thanks for watching. Team Wolf's not walking through that door.